Rocky, my boy, Blue. Hey, what's up, Daywalkers and fellow Travelers Night? Welcome to another episode where we're going to talk about Fortnite. This time, we're going to recap the story and some of my experiences and Blue's experiences during weeks four and five of this latest season, which is season five, chapter four, starring all the Marvel characters and Doctor Doom, who is like looming in the background and is slowly coming out of the shadows. So in this episode, we're going to talk about week four, which is Shuri's Invention. That's what the storyline was called for that week. And also Doom's Castle for week five. We're going to invade Doom's Castle finally and show more footage of that place. So for those of you who are longtime Fortnite fans, I'm a layman. I'm kind of just getting into this. My Alter Blue plays a lot of this. So a lot of this footage is his, and I'm kind of learning things secondhand through him and, you know, my brother and other, other people that he plays with. So again, if I get anything wrong, like, please correct me down below. I'm just gleaming off some of the stuff they've done and hearing things secondhand, doing some research and playing a little bit myself too, to try to hopefully make these videos at least a little bit of fun for people who are Fortnite fans and who are not Fortnite fans who maybe want to give it a shot. For me, I struggle playing the game because there's a lot of colors. There's a lot of it overwhelms my senses. You got to be very aware. And it's not that I'm not that kind of person, but in a game, it can be tough and frustrating for me to try to play something that's so bright and intense where everything hap can happen at once, where it's just chaos, chaos. And uh, lately, I've just been not doing well in situations like that. So thankfully, Blue doesn't have those kind of triggers or you know, reactions to stuff. So he's been doing great because <laughs> otherwise you would just see footages of me dying on screen. And luckily he's out there playing and you're seeing footage of actual wins, which is awesome. So thank goodness for that. Uh, but this one, Shuri's invention, now that the heroes have assembled, they've taken down Mysterio at Doomstad. This is wrong. Who knows how long these innocent people had to live under Mysterio's thrall? Robbed of their feelings, their free will, Personhood. Mysterio will pay for this. Hey, there it is. There's that fire. You feel what you feel right now? That burning need to right an injustice? That's why we follow your lead. That's what's gonna take Doom down. I just know it. Anyone who saw what happened here would feel the same way. Nuh-uh, you're wrong. That fire inside you is special. You just have to believe that it is. It doesn't seem like much, Jones. Believe me, it's everything. Now we have a real goal of, okay, let's go after Doom's castle. There's a Doom bot there and we have to complete these missions. So every week they add new story missions after we've met all the different heroes now in the last episode, the band is getting together and they're starting to assemble or they have assembled and now we're fighting back. <laughs> Exactly as you foretold. Oof, that badly. I was embellishing for theatrical effect. You're back! Have you seen something new? Maybe a way of defeating Doom? I have seen something new. A feline ally. A cunning plan. A victory hidden in defeat. You don't know more? Please, I, I have to get this right. We've had this conversation so many times. My child, you have everything you need. Okay. If either of you need me, I'll be in my war room looking over our intel. Wow. Kind of a vibe killer. You really want to kill the vibe? I'll start scrying your future. Hey, you are basically a glass of water. I can and will drink you. <laughs> So Shuri comes up with a couple of cool things to do at Doom's Castle. We have to plant these devices around and everything. So she has these shadow briefings she needs you to do. She has these three epic items that you got to go get at once, you know, or to, you know, to have three different epic items in your inventory. Um, you have to deliver parts to her at one point of the story. And then you also have to attach those rift calibrators that I was talking about on the rift beacons, uh, which is cool. So you have to go over to the Doom Castle and set up these rift beacons. And actually this is something I don't think Blue did successfully. I think what happened was he had that activated and one of his teammates went and activated the rifts 
without him. And either that or it just skipped over it. Because I was looking through the footage and I'm like, am I missing a chunk of time? Like, did it cut out? Did the, you know, the uh, internet cut out or something? And he's like, no, man. Like, it, I, I played straight through. And he goes, but that mission, I never went to Doom's Castle to do it. So I'm like, well, how did we get it done then? So I don't know, just a weird black hole that we entered or something because I don't even have the footage of him activating those calibrators. So yeah, very interesting, or those recalibrators. But something gets set up over at Doom's Castle. I'll just take the word of the game, you know, saying that it got done. And that is supposed to like kind of deflect energy or, or build up energy around that area, which will get used later on, uh, I'm sure. So having that all set up, your mission now is to go and attack the doom bot at the castle, which is not as easy as it sounds, especially if you land there first, which a lot of times you have to, because the map usually shrinks past it uh, instantly, you know? So you get there and you got about maybe two or three minutes to take out any other players and to take out the doom bot as well, and then gather whatever supplies you need, still be healthy enough to escape and maybe get in a car or a jetpack or something and get out of there before the storm comes. So it is tough. I mean, occasionally you'll get one where the map shrinks towards Doom's Castle. And I have some footage of Blue doing that, which is awesome that it actually happened while he was playing. But um, yeah, for the most part, it, you're going to be there for a couple minutes before the first storm hits and you got to get out of there because a lot of our footage is of us running, <laughs> you know, out of the castle. So uh, the Doom bot, though, is really cool. He's sitting on a throne made of the thing from Fantastic Four, which is, I don't know, kind of cool and kind of creepy on some level. He's sitting on the thing's lap, basically, and he, it's just like this rock throne that he made. And again, it's not Dr. Doom himself. It's a very powerful Doom bot. And, uh, and he's just kind of watching over things making sure the castle doesn't get attacked while doom's away building this power because like i said there's those dig sites going around so you have all these like henchmen and stuff working for him that are walking around in groups of three and five and six i think and they're and they're including at the castle there's you know, henchmen everywhere so sometimes when you see footprints on your screen it's not another player it's a doom bot henchman guy and so you got to you know judge whether you're going to shoot them or not because if you shoot one everything gets activated and doom bot and all the henchmen all come to your location and start attacking. So if you want that kind of heat, you know, go ahead and activate them. But just remember other players are around too and you have to deal with them if they show up too. So it's really intense and chaotic over there. But these henchmen that are at the site, they're looking for something. They're looking for this, uh, I think the zero point, which was something that was brought up in previous seasons. They made a cool comic book for Marvel for it. It was like a Marvel Fortnite crossover. And if you bought the hardcover, you got a cool like Spider-Man skin, which they just recently released during, I think, one of these weeks. They uh, put that costume back in the shop for people who wanted it because they brought back the fact that the zero point is being searched for by Dr. Doom himself. And so that's what his henchmen are digging for. They're looking for the zero point somewhere on the island. Um, and there's also these artifacts that are gonna start landing and we'll talk about Day of Doom in the next episode. I wanted to make its own episode for Day of Doom because it's a really cool like event game that they added in where it was just uh, not a live event, but just something kind of fun, mini game kind of thing that you could play with other players that kind of progresses the story of Doom and him getting power from Pandora, the box and everything. So. Yeah, that's definitely going to be our next episode. I want to talk about that in isolation. Because in this one, I just want to focus on that battle. Shuri inventing her thing, going to the castle, fighting the Doombot, and then retreating and talking to Hope. And kind of, again, motivating her and seeing her trying to, you know, listen and motivate herself and go, okay, let's, let's come up with a plan. Shuri's invention didn't really do what we wanted it to do, but it did set us up for this. So maybe we can build off of that. And then I heard, you know, at this point, there's rumors of Iron Man maybe coming back. So I want to, you know, I want to investigate that. I want to see if Tony Stark shows up. And if so, we need him on our side. We could use him to help Shuri and they can build this thing together. And it's awesome. It's like this cool big setup. And what's cool about Shuri being involved in this too is if you've read the comic book, if you've played some of the previous seasons when Marvel came in before, Jonesy, the character that we talked about in the last episode, he actually has a love relationship kind of with Shuri. Like they both made this connection uh, previously and they're kind of a little bit building off it in this one but not too much but I, I like that they're reunited now you know like these are two characters that were like all right kind of like spider gwen and miles like well we might not see each other again but it was nice to meet you and everything and there was a connection there but now they're fighting side by side together again so you have jonesy in the captain america type outfit and you got shuri as the black panther working together um so they both kind of like moved up in their ranks in a way and it's it's awesome it's really cool to see and uh, and to kind of build that relationship even more 
Uh, so yeah, because I feel like like I saw some people saying like, oh, maybe Hope and Jonesy have a thing, and I'm like, oh, I kind of like the Shuri thing. I, th I I like that they're building off that, and Hope is just like a, a comrade, you know, someone who fights alongside uh, Jonesy, who he has respect for and believes is going to make the right decision when the time comes. So I kind of like that dynamic more with them, and I kind of like him with Shuri a little bit more, and I kind of would like to see more build on that. But having it there, just knowing that they're fighting side by side again is is cool because it's like all right that they're kind of, that it's there it's happening the energy's there whether the game focuses on it too much or not um but uh but yeah so having that and then talking to hope and getting her in the team like really hyped and building towards this fight back against doom when he arrives or trying to get his attention the main thing they want to do is they want to take out his tower that big cauldron with the red smoke coming out of it and the lava inside that is big and essential to doom's plans they know it and they're like, maybe if we could just take that out. So you went, you fought the Doombot. We got you out of there. You got information. We have the recalibrators over there. But, you know, we need more, you know. And then we're going to need Tony Stark and other people to help out. And we're going to need to really work as a unit. And luckily at this point is where hope starts to turn a little bit to like, okay, I'm, I'm accepting my role. I'm still reluctant about things, but I am going to try to accept my role because we are at a tipping point possibly. <laughs> So that's where week five comes in, where we're basically just unloading on Doom's castle and building up to that and getting into the Day of Doom stuff, which again, we're going to talk about more in a future episode and the next episode, the very next one, because I want to isolate that because the way it, it kind of plays out, it's just its own game, but there's a lot of rules and things that I want to talk about during it, but I also want to talk about how it progresses the story. So it'll be a shorter video, but at least it'll be its own thing, and I want to talk about that. So here at the Doom Castle, you know, obviously there's the surrounding areas I always like to talk about. You have the Glacier Hotel area on one side of him, and then you got like the Doom you know, courtyard on the other side, and that's kind of like it. the castle itself is in the middle of those two places. And the castle has like a mountain station that's nearby with some towers, you have Doom Towers for his castle sticking out of the ground. Then you have like this cool little secret island in the back that our brother likes to go to uh, where he gets a lot of this gold chest back there and you can get a lot of weapons to bring into Doom's castle with you if you'd like. Obviously, if you go to the cauldron pit area, that thing's really cool. That could be where Mephisto is summoned from. A lot of people are speculating on that. So that could play a, a bigger story point, but that's also where they want to focus their energy, all the heroes, and destroy because they know that's going to play some part of Doom's plan in pursuit of power or whatever his goal is. And there's a, a reason Doom brought that cauldron to the island and they want to deal with it. So the heroes are kind of targeting that specifically. So it's cool to go in there and there's a couple chests in there sometimes, sometimes a big, you know, Doom chest or Avengers chest if you can. But a lot of people land over there. So again, it's right on the edge of the island where it's like the, the snow glacier areas behind you and then the Doom castles in front of it. So and then the water is on the other side. So there, it's it's pretty much right there on the edge of the map. And it's uh, very ominous and, and it plays a part progressing through the story. It plays a big part. So this is not the last time we'll talk about the Cauldron Tower for sure. Um, but then inside the castle, you got these little moat around it. You got all these areas that have secret rooms in them. Uh, there's one room that got updated actually where they're teasing some of the Halloween stuff. So there was a TV upstairs in the attic and it was uh, off for like the first couple weeks. But now in week five, it turned on and has static on the screen. And it's kind of hinting maybe at Saul being a thing that connects to this Halloween nightmares thing that they're going to be building up and releasing in October. So just really cool to see that uh, kind of I'm a Saul fan. I love those movies. So to see that in there in Doom's Castle, I'm like, well, that's wild. Like a Saul teaser in doom's castle i'm sure disney loves that <laughs> but uh but i thought it was cool i think it was really epic because all it is is the static it doesn't show like billy or anything like that um but it's it's still cool uh to have it in there but then down below underneath that you have like uh, all the secret trophies of doom so you have mr fantastic he's like all in a little ball 
in a glass case. And then near that, there's like Magneto's helmet, which is kind of the Zorn Magneto helmet because it has the metal face underneath it. That was part of something last season. So it looks like that Magneto has been taken down and, uh, and by Doom, which is, you know, that's hard to do, take down Magneto, but Doom is Doom, right? Um, and then there's also the Silver Surfer's cracked surfboard in that area in that's where the library is. And there's a couple other little gems in there too. And there's this awesome like painting of Doom and Latveria and stuff. So really neat, the detail they put in this, all the fun they must've had putting all these Easter eggs in there. Moon Knights, you know, Moonerangs or whatever, those are there in a glass case near the Doom, you know, room that he sits in. But also in Doom's room that he sits in, there's the Eye of Agamotto, you know, Dr. Strange's little trinket on his neck. That's in a case. You got the Invisible Woman, which is just a case with nothing in it. So you're just assuming she's sitting in there. Um, that's pretty heartbreaking to see. And I haven't seen it myself. And I don't know if Blue has. It's a lot of footage I got to go through, unfortunately. So I couldn't find it. But I think Johnny Storm's heart is like in a fireplace. And it's causing the fire in the fireplace. So Doom really took it to the Fantastic Four. He's like, I'm not going to be taken down by these guys or anyone else that fights alongside them. So he clearly went after them first and made an example and then took down Doctor Strange and other people that might stand against him, um, obviously. So Iron Man and some of them, they went and had to like lick their wounds, but now they're starting to come back. So in week five, we got Iron Man coming back and we got those secret missions from him that are underneath the Doomstad house where the Stark fan club is. And in there, they give you a couple things to do where it's like, oh, yeah, go get a mug, you know, from Tony Stark. So you have to go over and talk to Tony Stark. Um, there's these pods that now drop down in the map. So the map is always changing. The water level in the lake in the middle and some of the rivers are dropping. So it's getting more barren um, because they're charging up. They're building up these little reflector things kind of that are like beacons in a way where they're going to charge energy. So it's taking energy from the land in a way. And it's also draining some of the water around it. So that's building up. And then, like I said, you have war machine pods that drop down and they give you a bunch of weapons and you got Iron Man pods that drop down and they give you a bunch of stuff too. And it's just cool to just see all this. Like you know, as a fan of these characters, it's just neat to like get Iron Man's boots and go flying <laughs> and just have fun. Um, so I want to talk more about that in the next episode with Day of Doom um, because that plays a big part in Day of Doom too. But there's all these fun little missions you could do with those boots. They also have Iron Man gloves that you can shoot with. Um, then you got War Machine. You can, If you get a War Machine pod, it drops a bunch of stuff for War Machine, like the shoulder cannon, and then his jet pack or his gauntlets too, his arsenal. So there's a lot of cool stuff that they added to this game to just add some spice to it, change it up so it's not the same every single week or every two weeks. They try to add some new things and change it up. But if you go down and do those secret Stark missions, it's pretty cool because you get the mug, you get the dartboard from War Machine, you get some sunglasses from like a case, one of the Iron Man cases, or because uh, they now they have a Doom cases, Avengers cases, and Iron Man cases. So if you find an Iron Man one and open it up, it's going to give you some sunglasses. And every time you get one of those things, you have to go back to Doomstop. So if it's in a storm, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> you have to go and do this before the storm swallows Doomstad. Um, unless you're Blue. Blue went into the storm <laughs> to finish this because he was like, I don't want to start another match and have to find the glass again. It's a pain in the butt sometimes if you don't get to a chest before other players do. So he's like, screw it. He went into the storm and went to the computer, activated it, gave the sunglasses, and then they were like, all right, you have one last mission left. Just update the computer. So then he did, and he completed it. And every time he did one of those, I think he went up an entire level or something like that. So it was a cool way for him to level up and get us to the level we're at now. Um, so really, really neat. To, he just risked it all and said, screw it. I got enough bandages. I got enough health. I'm going into the storm. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take the boots and fly out of there. So if you ever need to make a quick escape in the game, those Iron Man boots are awesome, and they let you fly a pretty good distance while using them. strong signal from those rift recalibrators up here. Yeah, Tony has given me a little gift to help us take Emma Frost down. Can I be vulnerable with you for a second? Please don't. When the society took Peely, I couldn't focus on anything but vengeance. Watching you choose justice and do the right thing over and over again, it helped me find my way back to who I really am. Let me guess, a charismatic mentor with wisdom beyond his years? 
Exactly! You get me! See? This is why we make such a great team! <laughs> so, uh, and then if you get the blasters, you can do that. And you can also do the Unibeam from your chest. It's, uh, it's cool to get a Stark Pod and Iron Man up, um, or get a War Machine Pod and War Machine up and get into battle. It gives you a slightly better odds, um, depending. I mean, of course, there are some players out there that are just god tier that you just can't do anything against sometimes. But uh, for the most part, it's just fun to have all that stuff, all that tech, and have it in your disposal. And having like Moon Knight with Iron Man stuff on him, it just looks kind of cool. So anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts for weeks four and five. It was fun going into the castle, fighting the Doom Bot, retreating, talking to Hope, Again, getting Iron Man on our side, rebuilding these devices that are kind of spread out all over the island now and that are going to help out and they're kind of all aimed towards Doom's castle. So something big is definitely coming. I think they said there's going to be a live event at some point. So that'll be cool. Uh, hopefully it's a day where we're not working, which the odds of that are impossible because we work seven days a week. But hopefully we can play that if that's what, what happens. But this Day of Doom stuff I want to talk about because that was the stuff that recently dropped. Um, now we're just started week six. So I'm, I'm a little behind on some of these, but... Um, I want to get into, you know, what we've heard rumor wise. I talked a little bit about that, but I just want to catch us up to this point. Um, so that way I can, you know, make a week six and seven video. And then I think the live event, you know, if they do one of those, everyone's saying it's going to be mid season. So hopefully that's, you know, soon. Um, and then in October, like I said, they're going to release the Halloween stuff. So I'm anxious to see what that's going to look like too. So as of right now, though, fighting Doombot at the castle and investigating the castle, walking around, seeing all the Marvel trinkets, and then just getting into a fight with this guy was fun. It was awesome, and it's kind of cool to see where these characters are in the story now, where they feel like, okay, we're we're actually fighting back. We're, we have a chance. Tony Stark showed up again. We got Shuri working on her stuff and improving her designs. We got Hope starting to believe in herself a little bit, and Jonesy trying to motivate her. You got all these pieces now that are set into place, and then the Day of Doom happens. So in the next episode, we will definitely talk about that. It's a mini event thing that they did, um, not a live event, but just something fun, another mode in the game that you can play, and it kind of progresses the story a little bit. So we'll talk about that in the next episode for sure. Thanks so much for watching the show. If you have any questions or any comments, anything I missed, you want to let me know down below, please do, and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.